Hello. So in this video, we're going to continue to talk about the rectangle class. This is my second attempt to make this because I made a mistake in my explanation last time, so there's some new writing here. All right, so last video we talked about fields, we talked about constructors, we talked about what are called instance methods. These are methods that you need to have an instance or an implied object to invoke, and we know they're instance methods because they don't have the modifier static. So in this video, we're going to talk about a class method or a static method. And a class method or static method has the word static in their header, and we do not need an implied object to call this method. So what it means is to invoke this method, I don't need a, an implied object. So I don't have to say something like r1.intersection. So it's important to note we can call it with an implied object, but this is considered poor form. So let's assume that r1 and r2 have been created. I could say r1.intersection r1 r2, but there's no need for an implied object. So remember, r1 is the implied object. So this is poor form. So since this is a static method or a class method, which we can tell because of the word static here, I invoke it with the word rectangle, which is the name of the class. Static methods that you are very familiar with are those in the math class. Right? We did a lot of work using the math class and every one of those classes, is, every one of those methods is static. So you always access it, math.pow, math.square root, whatever the method might be. So bef again, this video is not as much about understanding the logic to solve the problem, but let's make sure we understand this problem before I kind of talk about the class because I want to highlight a couple things in it. So a rectangle object consists of four pieces of information, right? And we can see that if we pop back in here and we scroll up, it has a left, bottom, a width, and a height. Okay? So if we scroll back down to our method intersection here, so I have two rectangles that have been made here. I have rectangle A, B, C, D, and I have rectangle E, F, G, H. So the first rectangle, rectangle A, B, C, D, has a bottom left of 0, 0, a width of 5 and a height of 5. Rectangle EFGH has a bottom left 0.44 and it has a width of 4 and a height of 3. Okay, So if I come into my client class here, you, see, you can see I've constructed these two rectangles. And if we come back here, we'll see that the return type for the class intersection is of type rectangle. So we're returning a rectangle from this. So if I pop back into here, what I see is I generate a rectangle card called R3, and then I invoke the intersection method or class method using just the name of the class to access it, and then I pass it R1, R2, and then I print out R3. So if I run this, I get R3 is 4, 4, width of 1, height of 1. And let's make sure we understand that. So we come here and we see, there it is, 4, 4, width of 1, height of 1. I can move this around. So let's move this, say, let's do, let's make, there's our other rectangle. Okay. So now we see 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 4. So 2, 3, 6, 4. Let's go back to our client class. We're going to make, oh, pardon me, we're going to make our second rectangle 2 3 width is 6 height is 4 and if I run this again I get 2 3 width of 3 height of 2 and let's see if that's right 2 3 width of 3 height of 2 perfect so this does account for cases where the rectangles don't overlap so if the rectangles don't overlap what happens is we create a rectangle object with position 0 0 height zero width there. So if I come back and let's make let's make this rectangle so six three. So I come back to here six three and we can make it two four and I run this and I see I create a rectangle which does, which has zero for all its parameters. Okay. Last case here is if if we happen to be just touching we're gonna create one of the parameters will be zero. So here we're going to have, if we run intersection for these two rectangles, we're going to have the point five three, 
we're going to have a width of 0 and a height of 2. So let's see, 5, 3, 3, 4. So come back, 5, oops, 3, 3, 4. And I run this, 5, 3 is the bottom corner. It's a width of 0 and a height of 2. So let's take a look at the rectangle class, and let's look at how we do this. Now I want to stress, this is not necessarily the most efficient approach. I kind of just sat down and I jotted down some notes off paper, which are really important if you're trying to figure out these problems that are a little harder. And then once I jotted down those points, I, I kind of just worked through it. So I haven't optimized this. So the way I approached it is I first, I found the leftmost point um, between all the rectangles. So what I did was I created two new rectangle objects called R left and R right. And then I compared the two, I compared the two past parameters, or sorry, past, past objects, which one is the, the leftmost point. And then from that, I was able to figure out if they don't overlap. And so if they didn't overlap, I just stopped and returned a new rectangle, 0, 0. Take a note of this notation right here. It's quite useful. Since I'm returning a rectangle object, I can actually just create it right in my return statement. So then I found the bottommost point using the same approach. So I created our bottom, our top. Notice I just created the reference part of it, and I then decided which one was the bottommost rectangle and assigned it accordingly. So in this case, the bottom one is R1 and the top one's R2. All right. And I did the same thing again, returning a rectangle of 0, 0.00 if they don't overlap. So in the case that if we come here, if we have a case like this, So this one would be the left rectangle, this one would be the right rectangle, and then we see they overlap, so we have to do some more thinking. This would be the bottom rectangle, this would be the top rectangle, they don't overlap, and therefore we return a rectangle with 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay? Likewise, I could pop this one over here. Left rectangle, right rectangle, bot, and then they don't overlap, so I just return right away. I don't even have to find now bottom or top. Okay, So I'm kind of breaking this down to cases, and I'm working at each case in isolation before putting it all together. So then I create a rectangle called rint. I create four temporary variables here. And then essentially I just apply some logic to figure out those values. And this is really coordinate geometry here. I'm just playing around some coordinate geometry. Um, and I can't stress this enough, I drew a lot of pictures when I was solving this problem. So often students, when they start learning to, to program, they, they forget about paper and how great it is to draw a picture. A picture will help you every time here. Something that I really want to highlight here with this one is that make sure you return a new instance because you have to actually generate that new instance before you return. Okay, I can make another video where I go through this in more detail. Now, one thing we'll notice here, and it's not in this one here, I don't think. I have to go look again. If I come down here, I have a whole bunch of other classes. Sorry, I mean sidetrack. Let me just continue on from where I was. So if I come down here, here's our equals method that I've written. So we can see right away this is an instance method, right? It does not have the word static. Okay. And key thing is when you write an equals method, and this is a standard thing, always check to see that the past object is not null. So if the object is null, just stop and return false because otherwise you're going to get a problem down here. Right, because if I try and work through this part here, when it tries to access other dot left, we're going to get a null pointer because there's no actual information yet. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if we come in here, let's do this. Let's make R2 null. And we're going to say if R1 dot equals R2. Okay. Dot print line. Yahoo! Whatever. Okay. Let's comment all this out. So this seems like everything's fine, but watch what happens.
Nothing. So it works fine because let's actually put an else here because it's else. I don't know, donkey, whatever. Just another word so I can figure it out. So if I run this, I get donkey because the two rectangles are different, even though R2 is null. If I come in here, and let's take this little section of code out here, and now let's run this. Watch what happens. I get what's called a null pointer exception. Because R2 has a reference part, but no actual object part, when I come into here and I try and access other.left, there's no information there. So it's, it's like the computer's reaching out for something, and then it just finds nothing and crashes. So really important, always check the pa check if pass parameters are null. This is just a good habit to get into in general. Okay. So here we have another class method I can see called total perimeter. And this is what I was looking for earlier. I've actually used the equals method here. So this is this is an interesting line that I want to dissect a little bit just to kind of highlight. So we get into making quite large compound, I call them compound statements. So what we're going to do is we're going to read this from inside out, left to right. So first thing we do is we call the intersection method. Now the question here might be, why don't I need to have this? This is okay, but why don't I need that here? And that's because of where I am. Remember, I'm in the rectangle class right now. So since I'm in the rectangle class and intersection is in here, I don't need to actually specify the class that it is contained within. So this is going to generate a rectangle object. And then I'm going to check if it's equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So what I'm essentially doing here is I'm checking to see if there's, if there's no intersection. If they don't intersect, then the, intersect, then the perimeter is just the sum of the two perimeters, which we can calculate here in one return statement. Okay. Otherwise, I create a new rectangle and I find the intersection of the two. And then I just have to do a little bit of math and we can figure that out with a picture. So what's really neat in this line is this, in this, in this sorry, method is this line right here where read it left to right. First we call the intersection method and that generates a rectangle object. We use that rectangle object to call the equals method and that equals method compares it against this new rectangle we create in here. So now you'll notice I have two more methods I've written called contains A and contains B. These are all slightly different methods that check if one ring rectangle is completely contained within another. And we can see again that these are both instance methods since they do not have modifier static. So I've talked a lot in these last two videos. It's kind of just summarizing a lot of the ideas. What I really want to stress is that you're comfortable with the vocabulary. You know, there are definitely some more challenging questions in this one. The intersection method was really, was quite a challenging question, especially at a high school level. But we, we should be comfortable with the vocabulary and the various techniques that we use to implement this, this class in the client class. One question I want to leave you with is, we've learned something in class called access there and modifier methods, but I haven't actually written any. And the question is, why? I hope this video helped. Have a great day.